we're uh, hoping that by next Sunday, Doug will be back with us. Yeah. Yes. He took his uh, leave to go home and spend a couple of weeks. And uh, it would be good to have him back on the platform with his guitar. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's been a, a really troublesome week this past week for our communities and our nation as a whole and uh, some things you don't anticipate that are accidental then things that we shouldn't have to anticipate happen. When uh, those who are intent upon the destruction of the nation set their minds and hearts to destroy and harm innocent people. And so our hearts go out this week to all those who were slain and, and maimed and mangled in that bomb that was set off, the two bombs that were set off in uh, Boston. And uh, followed, I know all of us followed with amazement in how quickly these men were apprehended. But the people, the suffering goes on. Hearts are broken. Lives destroyed, families torn apart, and even the families of these young men who were so deluded and so confused, and their families are left hurting also. And so, just I ask you to keep the uh, the survivors and the families of those that uh, have been harmed so greatly. Keep them in your prayers. And then in uh, the little town of West Texas, it's not West Texas, it's West Texas. 2,800 population. It's been torn completely apart by the huge explosion there in a the fertilized plant. That's the same fertilizer that was used in the Oklahoma City bombing. It is powerful. He said it registered on the earthquake on the size of what is the Richter scale. And uh, they still don't know how many people were <coughs> killed in that. So our hearts go out to them this week also. Keep them, keep them in your prayers. Brother Bill, I heard an interesting story about this whole thing this weekend. Uh, with all the events going on in Texas, the ER is being overrun. There was a surprise pizza delivery one day where like six pizzas were delivered. And the doctor in the ER is like, where did this come from? And had a note from a doctor, an ER doctor in Boston. Mm -hmm. Wow. There you go. Oh, that's fantastic. From one doc from one ER doc to the next. Yes. This is reality. Thank you, Lord. You know, there is there is a compassion and uh, a camaraderie, a patriotism in this nation. Though we are divided and split in so many ways and so many areas and so many philosophies, still that it's, it's the greatest nation on the earth. Amen. And we are grateful, I am grateful to be living in that country. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, Wednesday night we have Bible study. We're in the book of Revelation. Enjoying ourselves. We encourage you to come if you can. 6.30. And our, our uh, Manifest Blessings ministry outreach is just expanding phenomenally. Uh, 
Holly, you are uh, Cindy, can you tell me how many families? 24 this week. 24 families. Yeah. And that's equivalent to? Probably 100 people. Wow. On Thursday, on Wednesday evening. Plus the backpack kids. Yeah, and then our backpack kids, yeah. where we are supplying them food on the weekends, the kids that uh, on the weekends. Did they ever find out what's going to happen to them in the summer? We're working on that, but for those not familiar, the uh, Colette was able to was, uh, able to begin filling backpacks for students at Pass Road Elementary, where over ninety percent of the students there qualify for lunch programs and breakfast where <clears throat> there's such low income that they are able to, the, the government furnishes them with breakfast and with lunch. Uh, however, on the weekends, for many of them, they go hungry. And uh, this ministry is developed where she with the assistance of others and certainly with the assistance of Manifest Blessing. She fills the backpacks usually of 24 to 25 kids on the weekend with enough meals for Saturday and Sunday. So there are, uh, that's six meals for the weekend for these children. And uh, Manifest Blessings have just been a tremendous source of food for that. And uh, this summer, Beth was asking what happens to them in the summer. Colette is working on finding out it's very private, so you, you cannot go just get the school to give you all kinds of information. But she is trying now to establish the most needy of those and the ones that she can get information on as to how many children and where they live. And that's the key to it, if they will give out that information. It's her intent to provide food uh, on the weekends through the summer months also. So we just thank God for the opportunity to serve. Amen. Well, praise God. I <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about a subject that I know most of you are, all of you probably in here are well aware of and familiar with. But at the risk of repeating something you know and know well, I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> and I'm going to share with you about the, the law that we live under. The law of grace that we are under as believers. I'm, I've, I've put a name on this. I've called it the law of life. Amen. That we are as believers privileged to be a part of. A law of life. It's a new law. It's a new testament. It's a new covenant Amen. that we have. And it's good news. Yes. It's always good news. Yes, it is. So, I want to just refresh your minds a little bit this morning and, and share some more information about that that I believe is really, really pertinent to our lives. We call it a new life, a, a law of life, a new, a new law. Because God's dealings with his people in the Old Testament was under the law of Moses. Now, the law of Moses was the Ten Commandments. Of course, they elaborated on that considerably through the years so that there were so many variations and additions to it that it's, it looked for the world like our uh, Affordable Health Care Act, <laughs> yeah. uh, where there's stacks of documents as high. 
that you and I are supposed to understand. And that's the way the law of Moses became. It wasn't just the Ten Commandments, but it came down to how many steps you could walk, you could make on the Sabbath. You could not cook on the Sabbath. You could not do anything of any consequence on the Sabbath. And it's good to honor the Lord on the Sabbath. But it's another thing to take his law and then make it into men's law. And it was called, <clears throat> the original Ten Commandments, Moses' law, was called the law of death. Do you know that? It was called the law of death. Now, when I ask that, it makes me feel good because I know I should repeat it and tell you again. The reason that it, God, it, it was God's law, it was called God's law, is that it was ruling God's law, ruling over spiritually dead men and women. Ruled over by God's law. And, and in Romans, the 8th chapter, in the 2nd verse, I'm going to quote a lot of scripture today. You can just write the scriptures down if you want. Uh, so that I don't uh, hold up and, and all. I'm just going to read them and ask you to trust me. It's that's what it says. You write it down and go in there and look and see if I'm telling you right. But in the 8th chapter of Romans, the second verse, it says, For the law of the spirit of life. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, yes. It is. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. The, the, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that law has made me free from the law of sin and death. The Apostle Paul said, I had been under the law of sin and death ever since I was circumcised as a child. The New Covenant, the New Testament, written in the blood of Christ, it's a new law. It has a new law listed. It has a new priesthood listed. It has new sacrifices. We're no longer offering up blood sacrifices on the altar of God anymore. What we have afforded to us is a new way of walking, a new way of living. The Bible says that the law of the Spirit of God the law of the spirit of life in Jesus is one word. It's love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's ever a time in this world's history when the love of God is needed, if there was ever a day in the history of this nation that the love of God should be displayed, it's this day. It's not going to be displayed in our government by politicians, by those who are philosophers and poets. The kind of love that we're talking about can only come out of the mouth of those who know His love. Amen. And it's our responsibility to show and share that love. Amen? Amen. Let me, excuse me, let me move my chair up. I don't like to do that, but I need it. Love is the nature of our Father. It's God's nature. The Word says that God is love. I, when we were children in, in uh, Sunday school, Bible school, Bible, but vacation Bible school, we all were required to memorize a verse. It was between that one and Jesus wept. <laughs> and, and someone always seemed to grab one of those before I could get to it. But it's a short scripture, but it says that God is love. The love nature of our Father. That is His nature. When He came into our lives, saints, and we received eternal life in Him, that new love law, entered our lives. We came in under a whole new dispensation. It became a part of our nature. 
When you came into Christ, you came into His love nature. Amen. It's in you. Sometimes we don't display it. But that love nature is inside of you today if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. It is in you. So, I read to you Romans 8, 2. Let me read it again. Then I'm going to paraphrase it. And, I, and it's, going to, it's, it's the same meaning, but it just makes more sense to me this way. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm going to paraphrase it. If you don't agree with it, let me know. I think it's scriptural. I wrote it down this way. For the law of law, see up there, for the law of the Spirit, I'm writing it for the love law of our recreated spirit is the life is the life Jesus brought to us from our Father. That sounds scriptural still? Mm -hmm. And it's made us free from the law of sin and death. For the love law, that's the new law, the love law. It comes from our recreated spirit because of the life of Jesus Christ in us. And it's made us to be free from the law of sin and death. For every saint that understands that we have been delivered out from under the law of sin and death, you ought every day to give thanks to God. Amen. We cannot live. We cannot exist. We will not make it if we're left to live under the law of sin and death. The Ten Commandments were given to Moses to give to the people to allow them to see for themselves the impossibility of living a life that, that would be in agreement with God. Hopeless. You would have to keep every commandment every day, every hour, every moment of your life. And under the law of sin and death, if you, if you broke one of them, you've broken them all. Can you see the hopelessness of that situation? Yeah. Yeah. That there's no way. There's no way to make it. But thanks be to God for His sacrifice that now has brought us out from under that, that heavy load, that impossibility. Yes. And by His grace now we live under a new law. And that is the love law of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. If we're outside of Christ, we're under the law of sin and death. It's just that simple. Yeah. You know of someone today who is outside of Christ, they've never made that decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, they are under the law of sin and death. Yeah. An impossible situation. But praise God, if we are in Christ, then we're under this new covenant. Trying to give you something to be thankful for. Amen. For you to realize how thankful you ought to be. We're under a new law. We're under a new covenant. We are under a new regime, if you will. So what is the law of this new covenant? In John 13, verse 34 and 35, it says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And he says, by this, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. How do they know that you're his disciple? Is it by preaching condemnation and guilt on them? Those that you see messing up? You going to hell. Well, with that kind of good news, yeah. they probably will. <laughs> By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if yes. you have love one for another. Yes. 
if you have love one for another. A new covenant came to us in Jesus' resurrection. Yes. When he came out of the tomb, we were offered a new deal. And when that happened, he fulfilled the old covenant with all of its laws and all of its ceremonies and all of its priesthoods. They were overridden by this new covenant. Yes. And now, in Jesus' resurrection, He comes to us as the head of a new covenant. A brand new covenant. That's why they call it the New Testament. Yes. Testament means covenant. We are under a new covenant. In this covenant, He Himself is our high priest. Jesus is our high priest. And we, praise God, have become a royal priesthood. Yes. Did you know that? Yes. That you are royalty? Chosen. Come on now, preacher. Yes. I'm telling you that if you believe the Word of God, that's what the Word says. We sing the song. We are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. A peculiar people to show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into His marvelous light. That's the Scripture. Amen. We are a chosen generation, peculiarly and wonderfully and uniquely made. We have our names engraved in the in the hand of God. God. We are special. I want to tell you again today, God doesn't sponsor secondhand trash. God is not behind flops and failures. If you are in Him, you're everything but that. Yes. Praise God. That seemed like that would have been a happy right there. <laughs> All right. Let me give you some new rules that we're living under. Here are the new rules that we're to walk by. In John 15, verse 9 and 10, it says, Even as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide ye in my love. And if you keep my commandments, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These are the new rules. We're to walk not as sons of Abraham, but we're who, who walked in the realm of senses. That's all they had. They had to go by the senses. Yeah. But we're not limited. We are a new creation. And the Bible says that we're to walk in the Spirit. What the man, that sounds way up there and high. Uh, what does that mean? It means in Galatians 5, 6, but says, But I say, walk by the Spirit and you'll not fulfill the desires of the senses. Isn't that just what we talked about? Yes. We're not to walk according to our senses. You see what happened in Galatians 5.16 is saying this. Well, I say to you, Paul is saying, I say to you, walk by the Spirit. God. Is that the Holy Spirit? Please. No. No, it's not. This is your Spirit. Your recreated Spirit. You You're to walk according to your recreated human Spirit. That's the part of you that's supposed to control you now. We are body, soul, and spirit. Before Christ, your spirit looked like a BB. While your body and your soul, your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Your body and your mind, will, and emotions ran the show. They were these big muscled up characters. While your spirit looked like a BB. 
Now you've been born again. And your spirit energized and re-energized re and recreated. And now your spirit, as you grow in the Lord, yes. your spirit begins to grow. And there are still a lot of battles being fought between your spirit and your soul and body. But he used to lose all of them. Now he's winning more and more. Your spirit is growing, gaining strength, and gaining control. Amen. So that your what your body says it wants, and what your your soul, your mind, will, and emotions will try to convince you they need. The spirit rises up and says, "Shut up! There you go. I'm in control here. Yeah. <laughs> you won't dictate how it's like it's been in the past." This is a new deal. Amen. And I'm getting stronger and stronger. And every time you raise your head, I'm going to put a, a hammer on it. There you go. My spirit now is in control of my life. I still lose some battles. But he is in control. Yes. But we're talking about our recreated human spirit. I say to you, walk by your recreated human spirit. And if you do that, you will not fulfill the desires of your senses. Yes, absolutely. You know that for every good and okay thing that your senses tell you, there's a bunch, there's a hundred that ain't good. Amen. Because it won't, your body wants to do stuff that you can't afford to let it do. And your mind, your will, and your emotions will have you running laps, mm -hmm. chasing rabbits, mm -hmm. headed off in directions you can't afford to go. Yep. And so he says now, you're not in the old way. You're in a new way. You're under a new law. Yeah. So you've got to uh, allow your recreated human spirit to begin to take control. As a matter of fact, that recreated spirit in us is supposed to dominate Amen. our lives. It's supposed to govern what we do. Yes. Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Yes. We're to be ruled and reigned over by the Holy Spirit. And when He is dictating to our recreated spirit, we're going to do the things that God tells us to do. They're all going to be governed and initiated out of that ingredient that makes God who He is, and that's the love of God. We will become lovers of God. Amen. And when you become a lover of God, you become a lover of those around you. Amen. It changes the way you do things. For 2 Peter 1.4 By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises so that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Yes. What? Partakers of the divine nature. Who's got a divine nature? Amen. Ain't but one. That's God Himself. Jesus. Yeah. It goes on and says, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. We saints have been made partakers in God's divine nature. You may be thinking, you, you're just about to go into apostasy here. You're about to, you're about to, you're, you're probably going to say next that we're the righteousness of God. Well, I'm, what I'm going to tell you. It's not our righteousness, it's His righteousness. But we are the righteousness of God. Yes, we are not trash. No, we're not. We have been recreated and we are to imitate and, Im and, and, and be partakers in the very nature of God. It's not supposed to live inside of us silently. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go out witnessing people. Uh, I know I just like to worship Him in my heart. I don't know about you. But when I have experienced that when you get filled up with Him, it's going to pour out the top. 
And that's what it's supposed to do. The fact that we are partakers in the divine nature of God Almighty ought to just make us jump and holler. Amen. You don't do that any time or wait till you're on the, in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> what is the divine nature of God? The divine nature of God is love. And that love nature is now in us. Amen? Amen. And if it's in us, it's supposed to govern us. Yes. Just as the Ten Commandments was supposed to govern the Jews. They not only couldn't live by the Ten Commandments, they made it ten times worse. Yeah. So we are under the law of grace now. Amen. But don't shout too loud because the law of grace does not remove you out from under and, and make you not accountable for the Ten Commandments. Amen. As a matter of fact, it makes it harder. Ten Commandments says thou shalt not commit adultery. The new law of grace says you want to even look at it. Now that's totally impossible. <laughs> Except that the grace of God never gives you something to do. The commandment never comes to you to do something that the grace of God does not enable you to do. Amen. So it's a tougher, it's a tougher standard. But God's never given us anything to do that He's not given us the grace and ability to do it. That's right. So go ahead and shout Amen. that uh, that uh, we're under the law of grace. Yes, Lord. Because even though it's a tougher law, the grace of God now is there to enable us. Under the old, uh, old covenant, the grace of God was not there. It did not help you keep the Ten Commandments. But now, praise God, we are operating in the divine nature of God, which is the love of God. In 1 John 4, 16, it says, And we have known and believed the love that God has, has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. We ought to believe. It says that you ought to believe. We have known and believed. Amen. See, if you don't believe it, it's of no value to you. Yeah. But if we have known and believed the love of God, believing in that love, puts us in a place where we understand that Satan has governed men for all these ages because men have chosen to walk in hatred and selfishness. How can Satan have control? How did he gain control of these two young men? Handsome young men. According to what we can understand, brilliant. How could they do what they did? Only one way. Filled with hatred and selfishness. Had the love of God been in them, they could in no wise have participated in anything like that. Satan has governed mankind because mankind has chosen to walk in hatred and selfishness. But... For us, we're under a new authority. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Woo. Under a new authority. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 1 and 2, says basically, well, this is what it says. Be ye therefore imit imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love. Yes. Uh, it says imitate. Well, if you imitate Him, what's it mean you're going to do? Walk in love. Be ye therefore imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love. In other words, if you are an imitator of Him, you're going to 
walk in love. If I am an imitator of God, I will love and give as Jesus loved and gave. Amen. John 14, 9 says, He that has seen me has seen the Father. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. And what we saw as we watched Jesus walk the earth, it was the love of God coming out of Him that healed the sick, healed all their diseases. It was the love of God coming out of Jesus that fed the hungry, fed the multitudes. It was the love of God at work in Jesus. In other words, it was God Himself in Christ unveiling Himself. Unveiling Himself. Unveiling His nature. Scripture says that God is love. God is love. When Jesus walked the earth, He was unveiling the Father through His life. That's what He's left us to do. As we walk this earth to unveil the glory of God. Allow God to unveil Himself through our lives. Praise God. There are several things that God says are commandments. For us. But love is the dominant law of God. Romans 3.10 says, Love works no ill to his neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Were these two young men operating in the love of God? <laughs> love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. You want to fulfill the law? Operate in the love of God. <clears throat> Just that simple. I call it the law of love. In 1 Corinthians 10, 24, it says, Let no man seek his own, but each his neighbor's good. <clears throat> in the 32nd verse, Excuse me. In the 32nd verse of 1 Corinthians 10, it says, Give no occasion of stumbling, either of Jews or Gentiles, or to the church of God. Even as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many. Paul is saying, live by the law of love. And in that, back in that Ephesians 5th chapter, verse 1 and 2, it says to be imitators of God. If we imitate Him, the very definition of imitating God is that we will walk in love. In the love chapter of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13 is called the love chapter. It says that love seeks not its own, but it bears all things. A marginal rendering of that bears all things means covers closely all things. Bears all things. Covers closely all things. Is that... Does that match up with any other scripture? What about the one that says love covers a multitude of sin? Love bears all things. The years that we lived before Christ were lived with sense knowledge. That's all we had. But sense knowledge has utterly failed the human creation. But I want to tell you today that the love of God, the law of love, cannot fail. Amen. Amen. It cannot, 
it's impossible to fail. Because he doesn't change. That's right. And I'm going to tell you that children brought up in this new atmosphere never become criminals. You make sure you bring your children up, those are the little ones. Bring those kids up knowing the love of God and expecting them to show and demonstrate the love of God. Jesus' this kind of love does not produce criminals. Y'all hear me? Amen. Hatred and selfishness produce criminals. Yeah. Love produces beautiful people. Amen. Now, you may not be able to look at George and say, boy, that is a beautiful person. <laughs> Any more than you can me. Now, Amy, you're looking at him with different eyes. <laughs> He's handsome. But, Love produces beautiful people. And it doesn't have anything to do with the outward appearance. It has to do with the recreated spirit inside of us. The failure of Christianity, quite frankly, and it has failed, continues to fail in so many areas. Failure of Christianity is not the failure of God in us. It's not that. The failure of Christianity is because mankind has substituted church organization yeah. and religious action mm -hmm. for this new creation. Yes. They're not the same. They're not the same. And I, it's my concern that as you look across the history of the church as a whole, that since knowledge has once again gained control and supremacy in the church. Too much of the church is run by their senses. That's why you have uh, denominations uh, <laughs> or churches breaking up and creating new churches everywhere all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> the seemingly inability to stay together. And it's why. Why would you not be able to stay together? Yeah. Yeah. The only one reason. It's hatred and selfishness. Mm -hmm. In most cases there, it's just pure selfishness. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got offended by the way sister so-and-so looked at me. Well, brother so-and-so just walked right by me. And I'm just not going to go back to that church. What is that? <laughs> that is self-centered selfishness. Yep. Yep. It's what divides the body of Christ. Yep. And when you get divided like that and you get used to living like that, then you begin to create things according to the way you like to plan them. And, and our churches are full of man-made plans and programs and organizations. And we have abandoned in so many areas, so many situations, we have abandoned the new love law. We're not operating according to it. We're operating the way we want to do it. There is a law of light and darkness. 1 John 2, 9 and 10 says, He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in the darkness until now. He that loves his brother abides in light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. There, saints, obviously, there is no place in the body of Christ for hatred and self-centered selfishness. No place. When you were recreated, you were born in love. And we were born to walk in that love. We were born to speak a new language, a love language. We were born to have our, our communication skills our vocabulary changed, renovated, totally changed. We were born again to bear the burden of the weak. That's why we have manifest blessing. That's why we are supporting missions. 
and we're going to have an opportunity to support in supporting another mission. And I'm going to be giving you details on that. 1 John 2.11 says, But he that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not where he goes. And it goes on to say, because the darkness has blinded him. Saints, the moment we step out of the love of God, the moment we allow ourselves to operate in any other fashion than under the love of God, we step into darkness. Amen. You step out of his love, you step into darkness. Those today who are out of fellowship, they're out of fellowship because they're out of love. They've moved out of the love of God. Every, every one, every single hurtful thing that's ever done or said is done through selfishness. That's a fact. Every hateful, hurtful thing that's ever done or said has its motive in selfishness, in self-centeredness. You think about it. You get angry and you rail out. What, what was that? Because they hurt your feelings. They did something you didn't like. What is that? Self, 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 selfishness. Come on, say it with me. Selfish. That's what motivates it. Your husband says something, didn't mean it in any negative way, but oh, did you hear it a different way. <laughs> Same way with the wife. <coughs> and, and you get jacked up and out of whack and all this stuff. And, and there's no reason for it. Amen. The only reason you react that way is out of selfishness. Oh, I ain't going to allow that to go by. Yeah. I'm dealing with this dude right now. Well, when you do that, you're stepping out of the love of God. Amen. You step out, you step into darkness. <laughs> Satan governs only one way. The only way that the devil can ever have anything, any victory in your life, only way he can ever have anything to do with you <laughs> It's when you allow Him through your selfishness, through my selfishness, to operate in me and cause me to do something stupid. Something's going to hurt somebody. That's just the way it is. 1 John 3, 14 through 16. How do you know you're in the light? How do you know today that you're in the light of the cross. Is there a way to know for sure? We know that we've passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He that loves not abides in death. How do you know? How do you know that you're in love with Jesus? Because you're loving those that He has recreated. And when you allow Him to show you how to love those that He recreated, you'll find yourself going further in loving those that have never been recreated, that still are living in darkness. You find yourself moved and motivated. You find yourself with compassion in your heart for those around you that haven't had the opportunity or have rejected the opportunity. And yet you still love them what you're doing now is you moved into another level of God's love. You're feeling the love that God feels. Amen. It's easy enough to love your family. Well, most of the time. And then you love them and then you learn to love Christians who are easy to love sometimes. And you find yourself moving on beyond that. It's the love of God that's in our lives. 
1 John 3.16. You remember what John 3.16 says? Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. What's the rest? Whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that's John 3.16. Isn't it just like the Lord to come back in 1 John 3.16. Would you be interested to read that? Well, let me read it for you. Because it's God's solution to human problems. 1 John 3.16 Hereby know we love because He laid down His life for us. And does that sound like a direct quote going back to John 3.16? So ought we to lay down our lives for the brethren. What he has done, we're required to do. God's solution to human problems. These kind of things that are going on in our nation, in our national government, where it's just <laughs> levels of, of hatred and level, levels of um, just anger and, and all this, it's a sure sign that the love of God is not operating in our government. Come on down to state level. Come on down to our local level where we have people running for councilman or councilwoman in such, such a, a low level office you wouldn't figure people would be doing and saying hateful, just downright hateful, mean stuff, lies. But somebody running against them. For what? For councilmen? Oh yeah. And they start spewing lies and put up posters. And, oh. Why is that? Selfishness. God's love is not operating in our political system today. That's why we are rejecting God on every level. That's why we are taking babies' lives. That's why we have a doctor now who is uh, on trial for murder. Abortion doctor who with the help of his aides were aborting babies and the babies lived. And they went ahead and killed them. How does that happen? A, a nation ruled by Satan's laws. But it doesn't have to be that way and it certainly shouldn't be that way among God's people. We ought to be living under the new law. He laid down his life and he says that we're to do the same. Now I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to, we're going to close. It's over in 1 John again. First John 3, 17, following on what I just shared with you. First John 3, 17. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? <coughs> My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this, by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. That's a capital H. Jesus. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him. Why? Because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this, this is His commandment, 
that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. That's the new law. That's the new commandment. Galatians 6, 2. Bear ye one another's burdens. You're over the, they're overload. Bear ye another one's burdens. And so you fulfill the law of Christ. That's the way it is. Do you want to be a success? Then let the love of God rule your life. In the same book, 4, 1 John 4, verse 7. Beloved, we sing this. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7, and 8. Yes, Lord. <laughs> we'll end it there. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Greatest witness that our lives can give is not how many scriptures we can quote. It's not how successful you are in your life. It's not how many people gather around you for you to expound to them. The greatest testimony of how successful your life is is how many people have been affected by the love of God that's been shown through your life. Yeah. That's the testimony. That's the gauge. All else is hay, wood, and stubble. Love each other as Christ loved us. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Father God, we love you this morning. Lord, it's so easy to say we love you. It's another entirely different thing to demonstrate it in every aspect of our lives. Lord, may we put aside self-centeredness, selfishness, the things that cause us to be a broken witness of yours. Let us be doers of the word and not hearers only. Lord, may the power of God's love overwhelm our hearts. That we would be motivated and moved out of His love and nothing else. <clears throat> I pray, God, this morning for Your people, Lord, that they would just consider again, consider once more what it is that You've done and why You have done it. And Lord, that we would be, we would find the grace to set aside every self-centered thing and consider only what you want. That we truly would live under the law of love. For I know, Lord, that many, many lives will be turned toward you if we will simply put aside what we want and how we want it and live our lives for you. I pray, God, this morning that every heart, every ear that's listening here would hear what the voice of God is saying and be an instrument 
than an imitator of God's love. We thank you this morning for the grace of God, for that love of God that has enveloped us. We thank you, Lord, that you've called us up and called us out, and you've made us to be something more, far greater than we ever were or could have been out of your great love for us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Now, as is custom, I would like to pray a blessing over you. So if you would, just stretch your hand out and let me bless you. Father, according to your word, Lord, let it be so. That let my words of blessing come on the lives of your people. Lord, that their lives would be so set apart to your will. Lord, I bless them with the ability to love like you love. To love each other and set aside self-centered love. Lord, I speak a blessing over them that the love of God would truly be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray your blessings on them this morning. Those who are down, those who are hurting emotionally, that they would be lifted up and strengthened by your love. Lord, those that are fighting in their soul, their mind, will, and emotions, their emotions are taking them for a roller coaster ride, their will fighting the will of God, their minds not always set on you, Lord, that, that you would move in their hearts in such a way that their mind would become set on you. For you said, Lord, in your word, that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. And Lord, I pray for your blessings on your people today. Those who need work, need jobs, better jobs, those who need transportation, whatever the physical need, if there's need for healing and health, in their bodies today, Lord, that you would grant that. I speak the blessing of healing in their lives, period. In their physical lives, in the lives of their, of their lives where they need, they need practical, everyday things, that that need would be met. God, I pray and bless them with a supernatural wisdom and understanding of your will in their lives. Lord, I pray your encouragement on them, that they would leave here today more determined than ever to be a witness, a faithful witness of the kingdom of God. I bless them, Lord, in their going out and they're coming in, they're rising up and in their lying down. But in everything they set their hand to, as they look to you as their source with prosper. And I say this believing it. I speak it over your people in faith. Asking Lord, believing you're going to create it in their lives. And for this we give you thanks. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mike, would you close in prayer? I'm going to make my way to the back. Take that opportunity to, uh, to greet you and, we, and bless you. Believe that God's going to do something good for you this week. Amen. Thank you all for coming. It's a blessing to have you here. Amen. Father God, what a joy and a privilege it is to come to you, Lord God, and to hear your word, Father. We thank you for the love that you have poured out upon us, Lord God, that you loved us first, Father. And Lord, let us obey your word, Lord, that we love our neighbor as ourselves, Lord God, that we pour out our lives for our fellow man and for our fellow brothers and sisters, Lord God, and lay our lives down for you, Lord Jesus. Fill us with, to overflowing with your spirit, Lord God, and with your love. Father, uh, we may walk and be true witnesses of yours and not of ourselves, Lord God, but lifting your name on high 
and giving you honor and glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.